exciting panel, or at least I am, because I work for the libraries. So I'm going to turn things over to Christy, who is going to um, give us our panel on Batgirls, Batgirl and Stacks, a library super. Thank you so much, Valerie. I'm really excited to give this presentation because as a librarian myself, I've always had a special fondness for Batgirl and Barbara Gordon in particular because she is a librarian. And I've even, I'm wearing my, my Barbara my Barbara Gordon shirt today to, uh, to kick off this exciting presentation. Um, so just a little bit of background, why I got interested in this in the first place. It's actually a pandemic story and I know we have so many of them, but <laughs> like so many people when the pandemic hit, I was working at home. I have two small kids. They were both at home. My husband was working at home. It was just a zoo. And um, again, like many parents, I relied a little bit on the more on the TV than I normally would. And both kids just love the 1960s Batman TV show. And I remember um, there was one particularly stressful day that I had a lot of meetings and Zooms and talking to, you know, you know, big conversations about policies and university decisions. And I walk into the bedroom and I'm, or um, into the living room and I'm really stressed out. And here's the 1960s Batman on TV and Commissioner Gordon is talking to his daughter, Barbara. And she is very upset because one of her good friends has been kidnapped and no one will take her seriously. Like her dad is brushing her off. You know, people are like, oh, whatever. You know, she's just kind of a flake. She's off doing her own thing. And so Barbara is getting more and more agitated and worked up. And in this very condescending way, her father says, now Barbara, a good librarian is a calm librarian. And I felt like at that moment, <laughs> I kind of wanted to throttle Commissioner Gordon and say that I haven't been a good librarian since this pandemic had started. Anyway, that just that one little phrase got me thinking about how libraries and librarians were portrayed in the 1960s Batman TV show. And so I did a little bit of research about that. I did a presentation about it at a local library conference last year. And then I started thinking about how Barbara Gordon as represented in the TV show compares to her counterpart in the comics. And that's where this presentation comes from. It kind of looks at both representations of Barbara Gordon um, and how they're different and how they're the same. Okay. So this is just a quick content slide of some of the stuff I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to discuss the scope of the presentation and why I scoped it the way that I did. Talk a little bit about Barbara Gordon's origins and then kind of dive into a comparison between the two characters of Barbara Gordon as librarian. Her education, her work responsibilities, her knowledge skills, her characteristics, and something that I wasn't planning to talk about, but I kind of stumbled upon as I was comparing the two, and that's job satisfaction, how happy she is as a librarian. Um, I'll be happy to take questions throughout, just drop them into the chat and I'll get to them at the end. Um, so here's just um, a picture of Barbara Gordon in the comics. And I just wanted to note that she looks quite a bit different than the Barbara Gordon in the TV show. I won't be talking about like her looks or anything like that, but I think as we go through, you'll see that there's a really interesting difference in how she was portrayed on the screen versus how she was portrayed in the comics. And I do want to give a shout out to a book that I wouldn't, that was absolutely necessary for me to do my research on this topic. And that is the, uh, the Batgirl Bronze Age Omnibus. There's actually two volumes of this. And I only went through, you know, the first few comics of the first book and they are phenomenal. I mean, the quality of the book is amazing. The color is really fantastic. And it is available through interlibrary loan at your local library. And I know because that's how I first got access to it. And I loved it so much, I bought it for myself. It's a Christmas present. <laughs> All righty, so, so the scope. So rather than looking at absolutely everything Barbara Gordon, because she does span, you know, decades, I scoped this presentation specifically to look at the beginnings of Barbara Gordon. And for that, it is the, third season of the Batman TV show, and then the first five comics that were published. And the reason that I scoped it that, that way is because the character of Barbara Gordon 
wasn't invented when the first two seasons of the Batman TV show were around. So it wasn't until the third season that Barbara Gordon as a character even existed. And then she started as a main character in that TV show season three. Although she was referenced in a kind of offhand comic or offhand comment in the final episode of the second season. Um, Commissioner Gordon's like, oh, my daughter Barbara's flying home from college and, you know, this will, th this is really great, you know, so he just kind of mentioned her in an offhand way, but she doesn't appear until the third season. So the third season aired between September 1967 and March 1968, and with the exception of the week of Christmas, there was one new episode every single week for that duration. So there's quite a few episodes to watch and all of them feature um, Barbara Gordon and Batgirl. Not all of them include library or librarian references, but the majority of them do. And many episodes um, rely very heavily on the library in their plot. So for the comics, I looked at the first five that were written. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, one, they overlap with the television show. So the first five, were being published at the same time as season three was airing. So they're, it's comparing apples to apples in terms of what was going on in society and you know the views of women at the time and all of that stuff. So it's within the same so societal context. The other thing is these first five comics were written by Gardner Fox and um, so they're all coming from the same writer's perspective. Um, after the Batman TV show was canceled because season three was its last season, there was a gap of about a year um, between when the, uh, the final comic was written, which is uh, Batgirl's costume cutups in January, 1968, and when she was brought back as a character in the Batman comic. So she came back in February, 1969, she had a brand new writer um, who was not Gardner Fox. And she had, I think, a brand new penciler who had not, um, I'm sorry, a brand new inker. They replaced the one who had been inking before. And also they gave Barbara a, ma a complete makeover. So they did away with her glasses, with her Princess Leia double buns and gave her sort of a more modern look to appeal to audiences. So in many ways, they kind of revised the character and moved away from the one that they envisioned when Batgirl was created um, initially. So that's why I didn't look at those later ones because I felt like they were really outside of the scope of the, of the project. So it's just looking at these five comics and this one season that were all sort of intertwined together. So then that begs the question, well, like, which came first, right? <laughs> the, the written Batgirl comic or the Batgirl that was created for season three of that? And the answer is both. So my understanding of the situation, what happened to create Batgirl um, was that season one of the Batman animated TV, I'm sorry, the Batman TV show, was wildly popular. Like it was a cultural phenomenon. Everybody wanted to dress like the characters and talk like the characters. And it was just like this overnight success. It was crazy. And ABC, which was the channel that aired it, loved it. In the second season, ratings started to flag. And toward the end of the second season, the ratings had gone through a pretty bad, were, were going down pretty steeply. And so the two producers of the Batman TV show, that's William Dozier and Lorenzo Semple went to the executives at DC Comics and said, look, we would love to introduce a female character with a lot of sex appeal that we can kind of bring into the show and liven things up and try and boost our ratings. And so the DC executives, um, you know, pulled together a team, um, which included Gardner Fox, who was the writer for the first five comics, and they created this character of Batgirl. Um, they created her backstory, you know, she was the daughter of Commissioner Gordon, and she was a librarian. And they published their first comic, which was Detective Comic number 359, in January 1967. Well, January 1967 was the cover date, but it became available for sale at the end 
1966. And so they introduced Batgirl in the um, uh, the million dollar debut of Batgirl was the name of the first comic. And so she was out, you know, starting in late 1966, early 1967. And then by the time September 1967 came out, she was a permanent cast member on the Batman TV show. But there was this weird little period between like January 1967 and September 1967 where you had Batgirl as a character in the comics and um, the producers of the Batman TV show wanted to introduce her character into the live action TV show. But the ABC executives were a little bit hesitant. Um, there were some other TV shows out at the time that showed strong female characters who were very action oriented, like punching and kicking and stuff. And they were getting some pushback from general audiences about portraying women in that way. So I think the ABC execs were a little nervous to have this powerful female character as, as portrayed in the comics who would be punching and kicking. And so sometime in early 1967, mid 1967, the producers of the Batman TV show um, cast Yvonne Craig, who you see here as a potential Batgirl. They dressed her up in an outfit that was very, very similar to what you would see in the comics. And they gave her this short little scene where she battles Killer Moth, who was the main adversary in the first Batgirl comic. And so it was like a 10 minute thing where, you know, Killer Moth comes into the library. He tries to do something heinous. Barbara Gordon runs into a closet in the library, changes into Batgirl and beats him up. And that was it. And the whole point of this little presentation film was to show the ABC execs, you know, here's this woman who can be feminine and still fight and um, just be, you know, really an arresting presence. And so the ABC execs went for it, they approved it. And then starting September, 1967, um, Yvonne Craig became Barbara Gordon slash Batgirl on the Batman TV show. So that's, that's how she was born. It was this interesting <laughs> um, progression of comics and Batman TV show at the same time. So now we get into the portion of the presentation where I want to talk a little bit about the differences and the similarities between Barbara Gordon. And I may mention Batgirl because you know Barbara Gordon is a Batgirl, but I'm really trying to focus more on Barbara Gordon as an individual and her life as a librarian and how that sort of influenced her life as Batgirl. Um, and so I wanted to start with education because um, you know, Valerie and I were talking before the presentation, education and librarianship is kind of an interesting thing. <laughs> so um, back in, the, I think it was the late 1940s, the American Library Association came out with some guidelines on what constitutes a librarian, right? So they said the preferred degree for a librarian is a master's in library science, and that still remains the case today. So most people who say I am a librarian, that means they have a master's degree in library science. But you know, those rules were kind of new enough in the 1960s that you know they're kind of all over the place. And even today, there's you know hundreds of thousands of people who work in libraries who do not have library degrees at all. And so maybe they're not library librarians, but they're library employees. And that term is kind of been muddied sometimes um, about what is a librarian, what is a library staff person, what is a library paraprofessional, like all these different terms. Um, so I was really curious to know, like, what is Barbara Gordon's education? Is she a librarian? Does she have that master's degree? And as far as I can tell from TV Barbara Gordon, the answer is probably not. Um, they don't specific, they don't get into a lot of specifics about her education, but what they do say is that she went to college somewhere outside of Gotham City that was far enough away that she would have to take a plane to come back home. They also said she has a bachelor's degree. Well, okay, they didn't actually say she had a bachelor's degree. They said she was away for four years. And to me, that means she probably has a bachelor's degree or she took a really long time to get an associate's degree. Um, 
In the show, she describes herself as a student of history. And so, you know, perhaps you can make the inference that she was a history major, but that's never specifically said. She does refer to some classes she took in college, um, including Egyptology. She is an Egyptian bibliophile, a lover of Egyptian books and manuscripts. Um, she also talks about how she studied the history of Southwest Asia and specifically Mesopotamian and ancient Mesopotamian architecture. So really a sort of eclectic group of classes for someone who you would assume would have a library degree. But again, back in the 60s, it's very possible that she simply had a degree in history and then began working in the library. And it probably would not have been, you know, considered bad taste to call her a librarian because that was sort of the function she worked at in the library. So let's contrast that with the Barbara Gordon from the comments. <clears throat> She has a very different educational background. So they say up front in the very first page, one of the very first panels of the comic strip, that she has a PhD, um, that she attended college at Gotham State University, and that she graduated summa cum laude. So she is no slacker in terms of her education, pretty brilliant. The fact that she is the head librarian makes me think more than likely that she holds a PhD in library science. Um, and I've done some research, a little bit of research about how common library degrees were and the kinds of degrees that were common in the 1960s and actually PhDs in library science were pretty common. Nowadays, I would argue that most people who get a PhD in library science um, go on to teach. So they teach at colleges, they teach other people how to be librarians. But back in the 60s, there were quite a few universities that offered PhDs in library science for practicing librarians. And so that's what I think we're looking at here with Barbara Gordon. Um, she is incredibly smart, as you can tell by her grades but she describes herself in this sort of self-deprecating way of simply saying she's a colorless female brain. And yet throughout the course of the five comics um, that I looked at, she's relied heavily on her photographic memory and her research to help solve crimes. So I think that she's selling herself short by um, calling herself sort of a colorless female brain. So their educations are very different. So how do the work responsibilities compare? <clears throat> so um, Barbara Gordon in the TV show is described as a newer librarian at the Gotham City Public Library. She does work in the main branch. So they do make that distinction. You see her throughout the TV show answering reference questions to people who come to the desk, answering reference questions over the phone. She is... Um, applauded by her fellow librarians as being able to find hard to find resources. They'll say things like, oh, she's only been here a few months, but she knows this collection better than people who have been here years. Um, they show her shelving books and pulling books for patrons. Um, they, they show her dusting, which I thought was kind of crazy. Um, and they make reference to the fact that she works days, she works nights, she works weekends. One librarian even said that she's only taken one day off in a month. So we, we see from her that she's very dedicated and hardworking. Um, there are many different kinds of librarians, um, but based on what I've sort of seen her do, it seems clear to me that she's a reference librarian. So someone who, who answers questions and provides guidance to people doing research. That really seems to be where her focus is. Mm -hmm. I also really like this picture of Adam West and Burt Ward and Yvonne Craig sort of in the, the Gotham City Library because it sort of shows the motto of the Gotham City Library, which is onward and upward forever, which I think is kind of cool. So the work responsibilities of comic book Barbara Gordon are really um, very interesting in that they're not in the foreground. Around. Like when she is in the library doing something, it's more like sort of busy work type stuff while she's sort of 
thinking about whatever case she's working on or providing exposition, you don't really see the, her work as a librarian tied in as closely to the plot in the comics as it is in the TV show. Um, so in the TV show, you know, there have been bombs that have been going off, but there are uh, manuscripts stolen, there are books stolen, there are alarms going off, there are aliens in the library. There's like a whole range of crazy things going on with poor Barbara Gordon in the TV show, whereas you don't really see that a lot in the comics. There was one comic that had the library sort of as a central plot point, and that was it. Um, so in Barbara Gordon in the comics, her role is she is the head librarian of the Gotham City Public Library. And when I first read that, my first thought was that she was the director, like she was the library director. But then I started wondering if head librarian simply meant that out of all the librarians who worked there, she was sort of the senior one and not necessarily the person that ran the whole library. And so now I'm not really sure what that means. <laughs> um, when I wrote this slide, I thought I knew, and then I started thinking about it. I was like, well, maybe not. Um, but if she truly is the head librarian, you would assume that she would provide the administration and leadership for the Gotham City Public Library. And like her TV counterpart, she works in the main branch. So right in the heart of downtown Gotham City. Um, some of the stuff that we see her doing in the comics, she acquires rare or expensive materials for the collection. And she also has a network of people who do that for her. And actually Bruce Wayne kind of asked her to find him a rare book for his personal collection. And she tapped that network she had to find that. Um, but mostly what you see her doing is shelving and pulling books, which is what we call paging in a library. And you know, most of that work is typically done by volunteers or students. So I'm really very surprised that the head librarian is doing it here. I mean, even in the 60s, paging was typically done by, um, you know, people who were not as skilled as, say, a head librarian with the PhD. Um, you do see her working the circulation desk, which means that she checks out books and collects them from people who are returning them. But they did note that she was simply doing that because one of her staff members wasn't able to do it because she was sick and so she was filling in to make it very clear, like this isn't part of her normal duties. And we get the sense that she works daytimes and occasionally she works at night because we see her at night in the library. Now, one of the really interesting differences between the comic book Barbara Gordon is that her library is kind of like her bat cave. So in the storage room in the basement, she has set up a place where she has a, a punching bag. So she'll do her physical training and working out down there. She has an, a storage room on the main portion of the library where she changes costumes, where she'll, um, you'll see her, her sewing and stitching and repairing her costumes there. Um, she has her notebooks, she'll have her radio, she'll have her stack of newspapers. And so the library takes on a really interesting sort of role in that way. So I wanted to get into a little bit about the knowledge and skills um, between the two characters. So <laughs> some really interesting knowledge. I think both of them really strong in research, the ability to recall something and look it up and find the answers. Um, the Barbara Gordon on the TV show, like I said, was an Egyptian bibliophile, so a lover of written ancient Egyptian works. She was also an expert in paleontology, knew a lot about the history of Southwest Asia, could quote poetry from heart, um, and was uh, versed enough in biology that she could look under a microscope and correctly identify um, what she was seeing. And I thought the funniest one was that she was also really good at surf lingo. So there's a pretty classic episode in the third season where the Joker and Batman have a surf contest and they use a whole lot of surfing lingo and Barbara Gordon is right there. She's just like totally understands it and uses it, which I think is hilarious. Um, her skills, uh, not surprisingly, she has great fighting skills, although her fighting style is very much influenced by the fact that Yvonne Craig was a dancer. And so if you watch the choreography of her fighting, you've got a lot of high kicks and twirls. Batman and Robin will often pick her up and spin her so that she 
gives people roundhouse kicks to the face, all while looking like she's a ballet dancer, um, which feeds into sort of that dancing acrobatics portion of her skills. She uses technology and gadgets. She's retrofitted her apartment to be her Batgirl lair. Um, she doesn't use the library in that way. So she has like a spinning wall where she hides her costume and her Batgirl cycle that drives out of like a hidden whole, uh, doorway in the brick wall of her apartment building. Um, she's also really good at first aid. She ministers to those who were shot or wounded in one episode. She does ride a motorcycle and inexplicably she plays a flute. So there you go. Some really interesting mixed bag of knowledge and skills. <clears throat> So earlier I was talking about how she converted the library basement into like her gym. So this is the picture of that <laughs> where she's like running into the punching bag and talking about how she's gone to like a high protein diet and doing intensive exercise um, to keep herself in fighting shape. So in the comics, Barbara Gordon has a photographic memory and she refers to this at least four or five times in the comic where she'll be like, wait a minute, that reminds me of something. And then she'll go look it up and be like, aha, I thought I remembered that correctly. Um, so she's got that sort of photographic memory research skills intertwined. She's really good at remembering obscure facts. She has a huge vocabulary, which impresses me because there was a, a cat woman comic where they were trying to figure out if like, so Catwoman, I guess in this particular comic, maybe in all of them only does crimes when there is the word cat somehow related to it. And so Barbara Gordon just knew all these sort of antiquated and obscure words that included the word cat to explain why Catwoman would be committing the crimes she is. She is also well-versed in hypnotism and actually hip successfully hypnotizes Batman in one comic, which kind of blew me away. And she knows quite a bit about sports. And at one point she says, the Green Bay Packers lost a great linebacker when I decided to become Batgirl. And I thought, well, that's kind of a weird thing to say. But then in another comic, she refers to people who do um, highlight and um, something called rad ball, which I guess is an Austrian, maybe it was Australian, I don't know. It was a sport where they play soccer on bicycles. <laughs> like, I wouldn't know this, but apparently Batgirl knows enough about sports to just know this off the top of her head. Her skills are really cool. So she is a first cue judo expert and they establish that right away in the second panel of the very first comic. Like I am a judo expert, I have my brown belt. So that explains why she is so good at fighting. They never really explain that in the TV show. So I think this is really cool that they explain it right up front in the comics. Um, they also say that she's trained in karate. Um, she's also trained herself to be successfully or successful at multitasking. So like listening, remembering information, reading, digesting information, like all at the same time coming at her. Um, she also uh, develops technology and gadgets. So the TV show Barbara Gordon um, was, uh, was using this technology, but the comic book Barbara Gordon's actually developing it. She has like this laser strafer that she pulls out and it like shoots laser beams. They said it was like a flamethrower. I don't know, it's just crazy. She developed this interesting technology with lights on her bat cycle that will track cars so she could follow people even when she can't see them anymore. And just like her counterpart on the TV show, she rides a motorcycle. So some very interesting skills. Again, not a whole lot of overlap between the two of them. They have very different areas of expertise. And then we kind of get into the characteristics. I feel like the Barbara Gordon from the TV show is very hardworking and smart and successful and focused. She's just got like, she's dedicated, loyal and punctual and like all these things mixed up in there. She's confident. She just, you know, whether she's Barbara Gordon or Batgirl, she just has this air of confidence about her that just like, radiates off of her, which is great. You know, it would have been so easy for her to play her character sort of mousy and withdrawn and that kind of thing, um, but she doesn't. She just 
speaks her piece, and I really appreciate that. She also is deceptive. So she, because, I mean, she lies to everybody, including her dad, about who she really is. Um, she's fearless, and she has this passion about her, too. So confidence and passion, really strong female character, very well-rounded in all aspects. Contrast that a little bit with the comic book version. So she is also smart and has a great memory, and she is also outspoken, but she's very take charge. Like, she's confident, like beyond confident. Um, and she'll go into a situation and immediately take charge. Like at one point she was fighting Killer Moth, she gets caught up in his web and Batman comes running in. And it's the first time she's ever met Batman, right? And she was just like, Batman, go chase that guy, go catch him, like just boom, go do that. Like ordering him around, it was amazing and great. And she's so brave and fearless, you know? The way the Batgirl was created in the comics was that she just came up with this costume because she was going to a masquerade ball. She had no intention of being a superhero. She just dressed up in a costume, was going to a masquerade ball. Um, and on the way, she sees Bruce Wayne getting, you know, dragged out of a car by Killer Moth and some of his goons. And she's like, well, I kind of look like a superhero, so I'm just going to go be a superhero because you know, Bruce Wayne and my dad are buddies and I don't want Bruce Wayne to get hurt. And so she's just like, I'll just pretend I'm Batgirl. You know, won't he be surprised when he finds out who I am? And she just jumps in there and starts karate chopping people and throwing people around and brave and fearless. And that moment, like there's this really great description in the comics that talks about like her eyes are sparkling and her breath is coming rapidly. And for the first time, and she's like, she's really living and she loves it. She just loves the thrill of being a superhero. And that's what she wants to be. And it's just, it's really cool. Just a really cool like switch that flips on in her head. Like this is living, <laughs> this is being Batgirl. And so that was kind of how she came to be Batgirl. She's also very cunning and sneaky. There's, um, there's a couple of times where she has sort of plot going on, side plot going on, or, you know, that she doesn't tell Batman about. Um, so she's really kind of good at putting together puzzles and clues and figuring out plans. She also makes a lot of wisecracks and puns when she fights, which Robin notes and which several pe several of the people that are fighting her are like, oh, that wisecracking dame over there, you know, just kick me in the mouth. Um, so she's got sort of this funny, sarcastic sense of humor. But something that I noticed quite a bit um, in the books is her anger, which you never see in the TV show at all. Um, so, you know, they talk about how furious she is and like um I think at one point they talk about her righteous librarian fury you know and so there's several times when they describe her as just really angry and she like just you know chew she chews out Batman and she's like how could you let that guy get away what is wrong with you <laughs> yeah um but she's also very self-critical so every time she makes even the smallest mistake she just like goes really gets really hard on herself. And again, that's not an aspect that you saw of Barbara Gordon in the TV show. You see her very vulnerable in the comics more so than, than in the TV show. And she's also trying really hard to stay focused and stay on task. And to the point where she's almost stopped wanting to be a librarian. Like all she wants to do is be Batgirl. And a librarian is just a means to an end to, for a paycheck. Um, and so we'll kind of see that when we get into the job satisfaction piece. And we're here at the job satisfaction piece. So something that I noticed um, that, that came across really strongly in the TV show was how much Barbara Gordon loves her job. She works at all times a day. She doesn't take off from work. She's always talking about being punctual and being on time. When a friend of hers was like, hey, why don't you come to the beach with me? We can go surfing. And she's like, okay, but only in the morning because I got to go to work in the afternoon. Like she's all about sort of business before pleasure. And she even says that at one point. Perhaps my favorite example of this is when the penguin tries to steal a book from the library 
and Barbara Gordon stops him. So the penguin gets pretty mad about that. And so he leaves an umbrella bomb in the umbrella stand at the Gotham City Public Library. And so Barbara Gordon hears it ticking. And so she calls her dad and she's like, there is this ticking noise coming from the umbrella stand where one of Penguin's umbrellas are. And I'm pretty sure it's a bomb. And he is like, Barbara, you have got to get out of it. There, it is a bomb. And she is like, I am not leaving this library. Like, I am going to stay here and protect this library no matter what. <laughs> And it was in that moment that I was like, I hope she evacuated everybody else out of the library. I don't know, because like, you know, being selfless is fine, but being completely careless is, is something else. Um, but then she also has set up alarms to alert her to when people are in the library after hours when it's closed and she'll rush down there and make sure everything is OK. So she has this real sort of it's almost like a mission in her life to be a librarian and also to be that girl. It's like she has these sort of dual loves. And, you know, as a librarian watching Barbara Gordon on the TV, love her job as much as she does, just fills me with joy because I love my job and I feel that kindred relationship with TV Barbara Gordon about that. That is not the case with comics Barbara Gordon. So as I mentioned, there was like this moment when she just fell in love with being Batgirl. And after that point, which comes like two pages in in the very first comic with Batgirl, like the library is just mundane. It is empty. It is humdrum. It is dreary. Like these are all words that I pulled directly from the words of the comic. She describes library chores, crass everyday activities. I mean, yikes, all too dull. I mean, she is just over being a librarian. She just wants to be back girl. But she, I think she stays as librarian because it does give her access to research. Um, it does help her, you know, sort of keep in touch with the world. She can read a lot of newspapers. She can, you know, stay current on what's going on. But her heart is being Batgirl. It is not in the libraries. And so that is another very clear distinction between the two Barbara Gordon. <clears throat> All right. So we're I, I, I left 15 minutes for questions and I'm just a couple minutes early. But yeah, so any and all questions that you have, I would really welcome them. Um, I just really enjoyed doing this presentation and learning more about Barbara Gordon and her pros and cons and what made her tick and particularly her relationship with librarianship and how that influenced her work as Batgirl. And I do see that I um some chats up there. So let me see if I have any questions. <clears throat> All right, I don't see anything. Okay. Any thoughts, any questions? <clears throat> All right. So one of the questions was, do I have a favorite fat girl story or episode? <clears throat> um, so I think probably I have several different favorite scenes, not necessarily 
necessarily a favorite Batgirl episode, <laughs> but several scenes. One of my favorite scenes <clears throat> is in an episode where Catwoman steals the manuscript of a poem from the Gotham City Public Library. And Batgirl goes to try and figure out like, what did this poem say? And it turned out that the poem was like a treasure hunt that led to this cache of hidden gunpowder that was hidden like back in the Revolutionary War days. And so, so Batgirl needs the words to this poem to see if she can figure out where this cache of gunpowder is to figure out where Catwoman is going. But obviously Catwoman stole the poem so she doesn't have the words. And then she remembered, ding! that everything in the Gotham City Public Library has been put onto microfilm. And so she decides to use a microfilm machine to access the content of the poem. And let me see if I can bring up the picture that I have of this microfilm machine, because it is just, it is hilarious. It is not like anything that anyone has ever seen before. <laughs> let me bring it up on my computer here. All right, zoom, share screen, there we go. So here is the microfilm machine. Now, anyone who's ever used microfilm or watched like old movies where people do research, like microfilm is a little circle of film and you kind of feed it through and it, as it moves over a light, it will project that light and that image and it will allow you to take large books and large format newspapers and shrink them down to about that big. I don't know what this machine is. It is not a microfilm machine. It's something that's been like repurposed from Star Trek or Lost in Space or something. But anyway, it was just like one of those moments that I was like, oh my God, that is crazy. I don't know what that thing is. But it spit out the text of the poem and she was able to solve it. And with Batman and Robin's help, nab Catwoman. But that that is one of my favorite scenes. And I I also really loved the scene with the bomb in the library and just how she was like, I am not leaving this library. I'm going down with the ship. And you're like, it's a bomb. What are you thinking about, girl? So, so yeah. And in terms of the comics, so the comics are really interesting um, in that they have a lot of sort of questionable characterizations of femininity and what is considered too feminine and too masculine. So there's several comics that I'm just like, that was not, that's not going to fly in this day and age. But I think probably my favorite one was, um, it's one that centers around a group of book bandits who basically use library books to communicate how they're going to pull off crimes. And Barbara Gordon intercepts one of these books and kind of puts the pieces together by looking at um, checkout records, like who checked out this book and at what time, and looking at the titles of the book and um, comparing them to what crimes were happening and figuring all of that out just using, you know, library circulation checkout cards, which I know is totally geeky, but I just thought that was really brilliant. Um, and I love, in that comic, there is a quip where Batman and Robin and Batgirl are taking out these bad guys, right? And Robin's like, I'm gonna put you out of circulation. And I'm just like, oh, Robin. Library humor, I love it. I'm there for it. All right. Okay, so another question. If this was covered, why do you feel the differences between the comic and the TV show were included in the adaptation? So I thought a lot about this. And when I say a lot, I mean like the last two days. <laughs> because it really sort of solidified with me over the last two days. I think the main differences fall back to the way femininity is depicted on TV. So as I said before, there was a lot of weird pushback at the time about this show called Honey West. I've, I'd never heard of it, but apparently she was a detective and she kicked a lot of butt in the 60s and that was not considered appropriate. And so there was a lot of audience pushback about it. And they didn't want Batgirl to be another Honey West. And so I feel like when they looked at this brown belt judo expert who was great at karate and who considered herself a plain Jane and super intelligent and didn't really care about like the feminine things like, you know, working in a library, 
history, <laughs> but cared about kicking butt and taking names, that that was just a little too much for the ABC execs. And so that's why they kind of changed the fighting style from judo to like this dance fighting. I, I don't really know how else to describe it, like the high kicks and the spinning and the very artistic and dance-like. So they tried to feminize it. It's also why they took the bat cycle, the Batgirl cycle in the comics, which was like a blue motorcycle. And in the TV show, they put lace and frills and made it look like a petticoat. Like they were trying really hard to be like, yes, she's fighting crime, but she's also a girl. She loves things that girls like, like libraries. <laughs> you know? she, she's working hard. She's like doing all the things that a, you know, a woman should do. She doesn't get angry. She doesn't have any self-doubt. She's confident. She's strong. She loves her job, but she also likes helping out Batman and Robin. Like they were, I think they were really trying to make her sort of a paragon. Whereas in the comics, they introduce that anger and that vulnerability and that strength, at, you know, the masculine fighting and that sort of thing that made her a more well-rounded character. So I'm kind of torn on which interpretation I like better because I think they both have their merits. And I think they're both really indicative of what was happening at the time in society, especially with, you know, with understanding how women fit into society in the 60s. In the end though, unfortunately it didn't pan out because the Batman TV show was canceled and that was the end of TV Barbara Gordon. Um, and like I said, th there was about a year and then they sort of re-envisioned the Batgirl in the comics, making her a lot more modern. And um, I haven't, I, I purposely did not read anything beyond that scope because I didn't want those comics to influence this presentation. I didn't want to refer to things that I knew were outside the scope, but it looks like the very next comic, the one in February 1969, is all about how Batgirl is desperately trying to catch the eye of this handsome young patron that she's got a crush on. And so she ditches her glasses for contact lenses and takes out her prince's Leia buns and gets long hair and gets fancy new clothes. And I'm just like, but <laughs> So I feel like in the comics, very likely they were again, moving toward that more feminine interpretation of Barbara Gordon and sort of moving away from the the butt kicking judo master that you really saw Gardner Fox create 